learners and learning land tyler from 10 new ukulele every wednesday and saturday subscribe if you like this kind of content ring the bell never miss a lesson today we're doing baritone ukulele like we do the second wednesday of the month and today we're talking jazz where to start and how to get going printable tabs with this lesson by becoming a patreon links in the notes as well as the description extra information this specific lesson linked in the first tab of the comments but let's do it grab that baritone brain and attention span and let me show you where you start your jazz journey on your baritone ukulele come on in let's do it the foundation of everything we do in any in any type of music is rhythm and harmony and the melody is what makes it unique what we play over top but the place to start is the rhythm meaning kind of this you know the strum pattern and the harmony your chord choice with jazz the basis of this is something called a two five one so this is where we start our jazz journey exploring two five ones so what does it mean when i say two five one two five one tells me the chords when i say two five one in the key of d it's letting me know that my two chord is an e minor my five chord is an a7 and my one chord, well, an A chord, and my one chord is a D chord, right? So if I were to play through just a regular old two, five, one in the key of D, it'd be E minor, A major, D major. Jazz music, though, uses seven chords. So to make this jazzy, we need to play an E minor seven, an A seven, and a D major seven. Your two chord, your minor chord, will just become a minor seven. So to make our E minor an E minor seven, we're going to put our pinky or ring finger. You can do either. You can do index finger, second fret, ring finger, third fret of the B string or middle finger second fret pinky. I'm gonna play index and ring. This is an E minor seven chord. The five chord becomes what is called a seven chord and that is a dominant seven. And what does that mean? A dominant seven adds a flat seven interval to your major third. So that's, or to your major chord. And that's really, really fancy. So let's break that down into more layman's terms, easier to understand. We have an A chord. To make this a A7 or an A dominant seven, we need to add one more note, making our three note, our triad, our three note chord, a four note chord. And we add the flat seven. Well, what is the flat seven? The flat seven is a whole note below your root note. So it means it is, we find our A note and we add a note two notes below the eight, a G. So to make an A chord in A7, we add a G note. Now we have an A7 chord. So our first two notes now are E minor seven, A7. And I'm just strumming any strum pattern right now. We'll talk about the rhythm in a second. The first thing I wanna do is discuss the harmony and really kind of the science behind it. The next chord you have is your one chord. And the one chord becomes something called a major seven. So what's the difference between a seven and a major seven? A half step. A seven chord adds a flat seven interval and a major seven adds a seven interval. So we take our D chord and to make this a major seven, we don't find our D note and go down two notes, we find our D note and go down just one note. So that's the difference between a seven chord and a major seven chord. A major seven chord goes down, finds the root, goes down one note, and the seven finds the root and goes down two notes. So you take your D, go down one note, which is C sharp, you get a D major seven, zero, two, two, two. If this were a D seven, you would go down two notes, C note, and make it a D seven. So that's the difference between those, but for a two, five, seven, your two becomes a minor seven, 
your five becomes a dominant seven, also known as a seven, and your one becomes a major seven. So now we have E minor seven, A seven, D major seven. And the D major seven is gonna be twice as long. So we're gonna play E minor seven for one measure. One, two, three, four. A seven for one measure. One, two, three, four. D major seven for two measures. One, two, three, four. 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 And that would be a two, five, one in the key of D. So that is the foundation of jazz in the key of D. If you were at a jam, you could say, hey, two, five, one in D. And a jazz musician would know how to improvise over that and create melody over that, which is going to be the next lesson that we're going to get to. But for right now, we're just looking at the chords. So then the question becomes, okay, well, that's cool. Now I know how to play a 2-5-1 in the key of D. Well, how do I do that in the other 11 keys? And that's a great question. Let's take a look at that. The easiest way to do this is using a chord chart. And you would just get a chord chart like this, and you would choose a key, let's say G. And you would look at that and you'd say, okay, the G is the 1, the A is the 2, and the D is the 5. So to make this a 2, 5, 1, I would find an A minor 7. I would find the next chord I would make would be the D7. We've seen the D major 7 and the D7. We've already talked about the difference. And then a G major 7. And now you have a 2, 5, 1 in G. Let's give it a little more movement, though. We're going to do four down, well, let's do one, two, three, and four, and we're gonna go down, 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 up, down. One of the important aspects of jazz rhythm is the swing. You don't want it to be, you want it to go, it's not do, do, it's not one, two, three, and four, it's got a little one, two, and, Three and down, 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 up, down, up. It's kind. Of, it's hard to explain swing. What I mean by swing is we're not hitting exactly on there. We're we're letting it kind of lean towards triplets. A straight rhythm would be. And swing would be. Now, another thing I'm doing is I'm releasing the pressure with this hand here and doing something called staccato. Killing the chord gives it a nice groove too. So we go down, 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 up, down, up. To our D7, down, 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 up, down, up. To our G major seven. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. Now the less strings you're fretting the less control you have over that sound that's just part of the deal so we get Okay, 
So that is how you would create the 251 using a chord chart. Well, there's another way to do this, and we can use it just the fretboard. Here, the first fret of the B string, we have a C note. So I'm gonna play this in the key of C. I play my C note, my two chord, I'm gonna find the root note two frets up. One, two. So my one is C, C major seven, and my two D note will be D minor seven. To find the five chord, I go another five frets up. One, two, three, four, five. Right here on the eighth fret of the B string, we have a G note. So G would be the five chord. One, two, five. Now there are easier ways to do that pattern. For example, one, two, five. If you want to find it using these two strings, you find your root here. So whatever you play first will be your one chord. The two chord is two frets up. And the five chord is directly below that, here. C, C major seven, D minor seven, G seven. And I can do that anywhere I want on these two strings. So here on the fifth fret I have an E. Let's say I want to play the key of E. E major seven up two frets is an F sharp. So F sharp would be my two chord. And then my five chord is directly above the, below this. This note is a B, so my five would be a B7. So in the key of E, I would play F sharp minor seven, B7, E major seven. But let's get back to C. Well, really quick actually too, let's look at how to do that on all of the strings. Here on the first two strings, if we say our root is here, a D note, that'd be our five, our one chord, two, two frets up, that is always gonna be the case. So we have a D major seven, we have an E minor seven, and our five chord is directly below that. So here is our A seven. So this pattern between these two strings is exactly the same. The middle two strings is different though. Let's say for example, we have a G here. We wanna play in the key of G. We've already done the key of G, so we know that our root and our two, A minor seven, but our five isn't directly below it. The root of the fifth is down a string and up. So G major seven, A minor seven, D seven. And that's how you'd use these two strings to find the chords for those keys. Again though, that is, you need to know the fretboard to do that. The easiest way to do this is with a chord chart. Okay, getting back to the key of C, we're gonna play our last two, five, one. We have C, well let's start with our two. Our two is D minor, which is going to be, and then our five, G and then our one is C. The D minor seven looks like this. Zero, one, two, or zero, two, one, one. G seven, zero, 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 one. Now, C major seven is a tricky chord. That's part of the reason why I chose this key. To play a C major seven, you actually play five, five, zero, zero. Really cool chord, actually. So we would play D minor seven, one, two, three, and four, and G seven, one, two, three, and four, and. You have another G seven right here, barring the third fret, middle finger of the fourth. And then our C major seven, five, five, zero, zero.
the next thing for us to do is learn how to solo over it. But I wanted to be able to get you started with this, and it all starts with the 251. Learn the 251 in as many keys as you can and play it as much as you can. Also, get your scales up to date. I'll put a link right here to, I'm not quite sure what scale lessons I've done at Baritone at this point, I'll check, but you should be playing C major, you should be playing G major, A major, well really C major, D major, E major, F major, G major, A major. Those would be the six keys that I would start with. Playing it all over the fretboard, all right? Because that's going to help us learn how to solo. All right, I'll see you the second Wednesday of the month in October. Take care, rock and roll, have a lovely day. All right, there you got it. That's the foundation. That is the two, five, one. That is how to move it around. Those are a couple popular keys to get you going. Just feel it out, play it, experiment with different rhythms, practice that swing strum we talked about, experiment with finger picking, experiment with extensions, experiment with voice leading and connecting the chords. Just have a little fun. What we're gonna do next month is we're gonna show you how to solo on top of it. So make sure you feel really, really confident with playing these chords and you feel really confident with the changes and you found them in several keys because we're definitely going to expand on these ideas and take it to the next level. Remember to subscribe, new ukulele every Wednesday and Saturday. The second Wednesday of the month is baritone day. We're gonna do that every single month. A lot of these baritone videos are skill oriented as opposed to songs, but we're gonna do some songs too. All right, until next time, keep on rocking and rolling. Have a lovely day. Catch you when I catch you. Take care, keep on strumming and keep it jazzy, yeah. Take care.